I just um, wanted to tell you a little bit about my last three weeks. Um, my husband's a roof painter and he's been out of work for like three weeks. And um, we have been um, praising his name for work. We praise his name anyway, but um, we praise him in the good times and we praise him in the bad times. But we've kind of had a week where um, it's been a time of like praising him for the petrol the car and praising him for the food on the table and just praising him. And the other day, um, we were, um, we live in this beautiful place, a lovely house on the canal at Palmy, and so we were, um, my husband brought me a stand-up for a couple of weeks, uh, about a month ago, and um, we've been like going out stand-up paddling together, and this particular day he's like, do you want to go for a stand-up? I'm like, yeah, sure, so off we go, and <laughs> he's Murray like feeling a little bit bad that he's not working, and we're out on the border, and the neighbours are waving, going, what are you doing, should you be working, and I like, praise his name, <laughs> and um, we were, um, just um, walking, um, paddling along, and we. I said to Murray, let's just sort of stop in this, this because uh, it's quite hot. And let's just stop near the end of our canal, and we'll just um, sit in the shade for a little while. And we started to, uh, and he said, yeah, that's fine. So we sat down on the edge of the water on our stand-ups, and I looked down at the water, and it looked like um, on the sand, even though there's water over the top, it looked like a desert, like the, the sand looked really dry, but there was water over the top. And he said to me, it looks like a drought, but there's not a drought. And I thought, okay, Murray's been out of work for two weeks. Thank you, God. Praise your name. Um, you know what's ahead. I have no idea what's ahead, but you do. And the fact that I looked at that water and I looked at the sand beneath where we were sitting, and it did it just look like dry desert ground but there was water over the top and I just said to Murray you know it's going to be fine we're going to have work I have no idea when but God's a God that we need to praise in the good times and the bad times and it's hard sometimes to praise him because it's really just your faith when the work isn't there but anyway yesterday Friday um, he got a job and we were like jumping around praising God, like, because we just thought, oh my gosh, you know, like, we knew the enemy was, like, trying to go, yeah, you're not going to get a job, you're not going to get a job, and we're like, no, we're not going to enter into that at all, we're just going to keep on praising you, and, of course, God came through, and so that was just so beautiful, like, I just, I really feel like today, I want to praise him, so I just want to, you know, <laughs> applaud him, um, so can we all just stand up and just clap, applaud him. And I was um, 
wanting to talk to her about something. And I said, no, no, you know, I've got something to tell you. And she goes, five minutes, just wait five minutes. And I went, so I went back to my room and um, went in there, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then I thought, oh, I just wanted to tell her. So I go back out to her. I was so excited to see her and I wanted to chat with her. And I said, to tell you, and she goes, just five more minutes. And I went, how long is five minutes? Like, five minutes is like an hour. I've been waiting and waiting to tell you. But that's what I kind of remember. I just remember that, that children were seen and not heard, and just, no, nope, hand up, no, nope, just wait. Yeah. So, um, that was kind of sad in, in lots of ways for me to look back and see that in my childhood. So things didn't always look good um, from the outside of my family. But at home it was like, it wasn't like that at all. It was confusing for me. I always just thought I was imagining things when I tried to express myself and my feelings. No one understood, so I just internalised everything. I have found since, um, found out since that there was a silent, very secretive, but very powerful spirit operating in my family, which I now know to be the spirit of control. God gave me a vision in regards to this controlling spirit. He showed me this as I was praying for someone quite some time ago. And when he showed me um, them, he showed me this like puppeteer. Um, and I thought, and I thought, okay, with the puppeteer, there's like strings that are attached to that. And I thought, this isn't from God. This is from something else. And I thought to myself, when he showed me that, I thought, yeah, I felt this person that I was praying for, that something else was behind what was going on in their life. They looked fine, but doing things that weren't in their character. And so um, God doesn't tie us up to anything. He doesn't ever um, make us do anything. His son Jesus came for freedom and to give us free will. So I thought, no, this is not... God, and that's where he kind of showed me about that controlling spirit, how it just takes over. And, you know, if you think of a puppeteer and a puppet, like, if they're very good at their job, you actually get quite caught up in the character of the puppet. Um, but you really don't ever think, oh, there's someone up there, you know, like, um, operating them. They're, um, you just think about the character. And, and that's what it's like sometimes. Like we see these people and they seem to be quite nice on the outside, but what's behind them is secretive and it's powerful and it's really nasty. And so, you know, I, I was just thankful that God, he showed me that um, control that way in, um, in a powerful way. So I'm so thankful that God, my loving daddy, my rescuer, my redeemer, shed all my light in this area for my life. And over some time, he freed me from the, from the oppression of that controlling spirit that I've been under. It's like he airlifted me out of the darkness and the yoke of bondage. He dusted me off and called me by name. He redeemed me. He put a crown on me in a robe of righteousness and said, you're mine. And for once, I felt the light. changing for me as my name Lisa means promise of God and Jane means a gift from God. I sat there in amazement, overwhelmed really. I tell you it was truly a turning point for me in my life. My parents had given me such a biblical name they didn't even know. To me this changed everything. A greater power had intervened in God. He put a seal on me, a name that gave me the confidence yeah. and I felt important. It took me straight to that scripture in Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I now began to allow the scripture to wash over me, and after some time I was able to believe this is true. 
So I feel confidence is something that has to come from within. If you haven't been shown or led by example from the right source, it just isn't there. That's it. God had a plan though. In Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14, was a scripture that I started declaring over my life. For now, the plans I have for you, Lisa, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, Lisa, and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then when you call upon me, Lisa, and come and pray to me, Lisa, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. These words are powerful. I went over the scripture and I said, I know the plans I have for you. He knew my plans. Wow, I didn't even know what they were. <laughs> Declaring, speaking this over my life, hope. I had no hope, but God did. Future, that's something come. He knew all this. He knew my future was scary. Call upon me, pray. You just wouldn't believe how my prayer life has come alive. I became a prayer warrior, actually. Thinking of all the times that I pray for God to bring change in areas, this area and that area. Listen, no one ever listened to me. You mean you would listen, you would really listen? Seek me, find me. I will bring you back from captivity. Bring me back from a place that I never thought I could get free from. God had got my attention through this scripture. It was life changing. Speaking this over me every day and meditating on it brought me to an understanding of a father that knew me deeply and loved me so much. God's words were life to my soul. I was asked to be a part of a women's ministry at a church I was attending at the time. The first day we met as a group, we had to introduce ourselves and share a little bit about us. Well, some love attention, but no, not me. I wanted to do a runner. I was shaky. So scared of talking in a group, but yes, of course, I did. I spoke. It was nerve-wracking. But little did I know, this was the start of my confidence journey. The scripture in Exodus was continually jumping out at me, God speaking to Moses, saying, Now I will help you speak and teach you what to say. But Moses said, Oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. Those words were often used by me. Choose somebody else. I don't want to do this. Choose somebody else. God knew he had to break the mindset and get me to a place where I um, was a little bit more relaxed. And it wasn't easy. I put up a fight every time. As Leanne Orford would remember very clearly, she was a part of the ministry with me. She would say, Lisa, God has told me he wants you to speak on the microphone today. And I would say abruptly, Leanne, you're not hearing very clearly from God. Do you remember that? I used to say that. I'm not hearing very clearly. Then. She actually did hear very clearly from God because I went on to um, head that ministry for three years. My prophetic gifting started to rise up. That was pretty amazing as there um, was, sorry, as this is where my relationship with God went to a whole new level of trust, in turn, in growing my confidence yet again. My healing gifts started to operate. Once again, confidence in Him. I became involved in many other areas of the church, praying out loud, which was something that I thought I'd never do, in group meetings, running a home group. I can honestly say God is amazing. I felt transformed. I felt new. I felt alive and I felt more confident. He saw the potential in me and I'm glad I actually gave Him the chance. My journey hasn't been easy. It never is when you have to break old habits. God used this scenario for me. He said, Lisa, um, he used the scenario of this ship. And he said to me, um, when you look at a big ship, um, they're heading in a certain direction, but it takes time to turn them around. It takes time to put them on a new course. And that was me. But you know, he had time for me. He always listened. My wounds were his wounds. He sent his son Jesus to pay the price for them. He gave his life for mine. So it's about time I gave mine up for his. He knew that speaking about him like this today was something that would give me great joy and peace because I love him and he's worth it. So I'm putting aside my fears and trusting in him. Another scripture that's been a very powerful one in my life 
which is Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. To someone, to trust someone is putting yourself in their hands. And if we do that, we can be made a fool of or be hurt. But God's never done that to me and he never will. I can trust him with all my heart. That's why this scripture has been gold for me. Yeah. It truly has. I want to leave you with something that God gave me the other day. He, um, he said a confident woman is someone that can hold her head high and not worry about what others may say about her. It doesn't matter what a journey has been. It's a knowing in herself that she is loved beyond words. Thank you.